for me um, about a year ago or the past few months or something. And when I looked at the poem and what I wanted to say about Lane, it all fit. And the poem is called Life. And it says it was made for a purpose. It was made for a reason. It was made as a gift. It can be long, it can be short. It can be fast, it can be slow. It can be painful, it can be fruitful. It can be guessed, and it can be blessed. It can be whatever you want it to be. It's life. And when I think about those, and I think about those words, you know, when I think about the purpose with Lane, Lane and I met maybe 20, 20 some odd years ago. Um, probably a relationship that was, uh, well, not smooth, but fairly rough. Lane was a real estate developer. Uh, generally, real estate developers come in and they want to get as much as they can for their client. Lane and I first met uh, when we were doing the pavilion up north. Uh, actually, I think I walked out of the first meeting that I had with him. But what happened with Lane, Lane began to evolve as time went on. And Lane, instead of being the type of person that would take a developer and try and get as much as he could for that developer out of the city, began to tell the developer, well, wait a minute. This is what the city will accept. This is what you're going to have to do. This is the money you're going to have to spend. And the reason is that Lane began to buy into the vision that we had for the city of Fayetteville. A place to live, a place to work, a place to raise our kids. And he believed in that very strongly. And as he evolved and, and began to get more involved in Main Street, the stuff like uh, Christmas on, on the Square, Christmas on Main Street, the merchants, downtown Fayetteville Merchants Association. He began to get these people together and say, what can we do to encourage people to come downtown? He brought people in from the county. He brought people from the chamber. He had them sitting on the board. And they all came and they all decided on the vision for Fayetteville. And that vision grew. Lane was the type of person that uh, him and I played golf together a lot. Number 12 out at Whitewater, most of you know those that do play golf, is the one that's across the lake. Lane had a hard time getting across the lake with that ball. But he never gave up. He'd get back up there and he'd try again and he'd try again. And finally we'd get one across. It may skip. Or it may be a good one, but he never, he never quit. And when I look in here and I, and, and I see things like it can be fast, I think of Lane with all his real estate deals. And the next line where it can be slow. And knowing that he would get up on a Saturday morning, a beautiful day like today, and look at his, his wife Sheila and say, road trip. And it was time to get out of town and go. I think right now he's, uh, he keeps bothering me with these darn things here. <laughs> I know he's doing it because that's just what he does. He, uh, we love to irritate each other. Uh, We all miss him. Lane, he was a good man. So, I knew I couldn't get to it.
But uh, all I want to say is thank each of you for coming out, for honoring a man of vision, honoring a man that was a friend, a man that would do whatever he could to help whoever he could, and do whatever he could to make this city the greatness that it has. There's a lot of things I know in, when, when I think about Lane too. I think about his sense of humor. There was a uh, there was a story that was told, and he actually told it. So, you know, the fact that he didn't mind telling things on himself sometimes got him in trouble because it carried on and on and on. Other people found out, but. Uh, the one story that he told, he was going somewhere early one morning. Sheila was still asleep, and he got dressed in the dark and went on to whatever this was. It was either at South Fulton uh, Chamber or something. I forget what it was. But most of you know, Lane used to love to wear his boots. He had several pairs of boots. Well, this particular morning, I think he, it was dark when he got dressed, and he put on a either a a blue one and a red one. <laughs> and when he got to where he was going, someone came up to him and said, Hey, nice pair of boots. <laughs> and he looked down and saw the red and the blue one and he said, Yeah, I got one at home, another pair at home just like that. <laughs> but that was Lane. He had a sense of humor. He didn't mind being the butt of a joke. But he could also get one back on you too. So, Sheila, um, from the city, I think it's appropriate that this be named the Lane Brown Gazebo. The only other thing that I'll, I'll say in, in closing is that for years and years and years, we knew that Lane's first name began with E. He never would tell us what it was. So we always called him Elaine. Elaine Brown. And at the end, we found that it was Ernest, which is a fine name. But uh, we're going to miss him. We miss Lane. Uh, your family's always welcome here in the city. And if there's anything that we could ever do, to make your visit a little bit better. Call me. Thank you.